What's going on, y'all? Another day, and we all got our Tennessee State gear on, man. You know what I'm saying? T got the dunks, but we are in a great space today because we have the president, El Presidente, uh, president of the TSU National Alumni Association, man. We are so happy to have him. He has a great story, man. He's doing so much for the community, so much for HBCUs, but so much for Tennessee State in general. So without... No further introduction, Mr. Charles Gabbard. Introduce yourself, where you're from, how you become oh, president. First, thank you all for like having me on here. This is this is my zone, so I appreciate you all bringing me into my zone. There's a lot that I have to do as the alumni president, and I want to do more stuff like this. So I appreciate you all and just blessings to the podcast. This is great. I, I, I've watched the episodes you've done so far, and they've been awesome. So I'm honored to be a part of it. So thank you. Cool. So, 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 yeah. tell us about yourself, Charles. So, so, where, where are you from? What, what made you go to the wonderful institution TSU, uh, and what do you do now professionally? Let's talk. So, I am from the. You know, you got to put. You didn't go to an HBCU if you didn't put the in front of something. <laughs> so, I am from the Fulton, Missouri. You're like, what? Where is Fulton? <laughs> so, Fulton is not St. Louis. Is not Kansas City. Fulton is like right in the middle of Missouri. And I am just so proud to be from Fulton. Like my goal when I went off to school was to put Fulton on the map. Like people tried to get me to be like, oh, you're from St. Louis. No, I'm from Fulton. <laughs> you're from Kansas City. No, I'm from Fulton. So it was literally my goal that one day when we're at the pep rally, you know how they yell out, who's from Memphis? Everybody's from Memphis. Everyone's from Atlanta. Everyone's from Chicago. I had the goal. <laughs> I had the goal that one day someone would yell out Fulton, Missouri on the mic. And they actually did. And I was the only one yelling, but I held it down for Fulton, Missouri. So I'm from Fulton, Missouri. My story is a little bit different. Um, you know, Fulton's a small town. Um, I went to a predominantly white high school. Um, I definitely love my experience. I never saw myself at an HCCU. And so what's interesting, I was completely Carlton Banks, completely <laughs> like the preppy, wearing the Doc Martens, wearing the, the khakis oh, and the gold. Boy, and I had no, like, no plan to go to an HBCU. And what's funny about it is, actually, I don't know if y'all remember the program Up With what up with people up with people was a program that um was for actors and musicians and so i'm actually a musician i'm a pianist i play the saxophone i sing and so i had my heart set on joining up with people and traveling the world and so what they did is kind of an exchange program you travel the world and you put on a show for whatever country you're in you are there for several weeks to several months and you learn their culture and you bring their culture back to the united states States. And so it's like a culture exchange. So I had my heart set on, I'm going to be in this Up With People. Well, the year that I graduated, which was 2000, Up With People lost their funding. So that I couldn't do it. And yeah. so what's interesting is my sister is Miss Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. And so my sister is four years older than me and had her heart set on, I will go to a Black school. I don't care where it is. I don't care which Black school. I'm going to an HBCU. And so the interesting thing, my mother had an intern. My mom's a guidance counselor and she had an intern. And I really, really wish... I knew this young lady's name because she changed the course of life for my sister and myself. But her intern was actually from Tennessee State University. And uh, and so she came into work and was talking to my mom about, you know, your daughter needs to go to Tennessee State University. And so my sister actually went to TSU and me being the, the little brother who was going to travel the world, who had no other plan. I had no first, no second, no third choice for college. It was not in my, my plans. I just went where my sister went. So my story is grand about up with people but it's like i just followed my sister to tsu so right. that is my tsu story that's how i decided to go to an hbcu 
Right. So, so did you have the same major as your sister or you guys had different majors? No, my sister is a whole math major. My sister had a whole star with NASA and like, she is like very technical. And I'm like, I got an A in speech. So <laughs> that is completely, I had um, I, my business, I have a business administration degree. So my degree is in marketing. And um, so what's interesting even about that is I've always been the type that I follow passion. I, I, I don't follow a plan because as I learned early on in life, your plan can change. Something that you want to do cannot even be available to you. So I've learned to follow my passion. So my passion led me into juvenile justice. So four days after graduating from TSU in 2004, I actually went home back to Fulton, Missouri, and I saw an ad in the paper to work in a juvenile facility. Um, the way that they spoke about it in the paper was it was like a youth treatment center. So it sounded fun. It's like, oh, like I'm going to be working at a camp and I'm going to be just hanging out with kids. We're going to be painting and drawing, listening to music. So I'm like, bet I can do that. I, you know, I, I can be cool. Now, granted, I was still kind of Carlton, like even past college. So we'll go back to that. So Carlton shows up after being Mr. TSU, not knowing how to do nothing but walk around in a suit. And I actually work in juvenile justice. So even though my degree is in business administration, my career is in juvenile justice. And I've been working in juvenile justice since 2004. The juvenile justice is that like scare straight you ever saw the show yeah yeah it is and, and what's so cool about it so i worked in a, a youth treatment facility so that's um so the first facility i worked in was actually uh, a, a girls facility it was rosa park center i was hired to work in the rosa park center for girls and again it's like um, where you have anywhere from 10 to 12 um, youth who have been um, arrested and they're in the care of, of the state. And so um, those girls were a lot. And I was like, this is like the bad girls club. <laughs> like it was so when I tell you it was so much fun. And and I, I have so many different things. I want to be on reality TV, too. So we'll talk about that, too. So I was like, this is like the real world. Like what happens when people stop being polite? They start cussing people out and they start fighting. And I'm like, yo, like, so people will call me and be like, what are you doing now? I'm like, I'm working in these youth facilities with the bad girls club. And it's like the real world. So it was like, I was on reality TV. So I really loved it. It, it was so engaging and interesting. It fit my personality. I love to talk to the kids. They were entertaining. I was entertaining to them. So it was just great. So I just, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And so I, I've stayed in it and I moved along um, within it. And so now I'm a, a consultant for New York City. Um, so I'm working, consulting the New York City juvenile justice system. So I moved around. I, I, I was working frontline staff as a counselor. I was a statewide trainer for the state of Missouri um, with the Department of, of, of Social Services. Uh, and so actually the company, the consulting company that I work with now is Missouri Youth Services Institute. So the Missouri approach is one of the leading approaches with how to handle youth in juvenile facilities and youth treatment facilities. And so New York wanted to try out that model. Um, and so they actually closed down some of their correctional facilities for you and they opened up these um, treatment facilities. And so I've been consulting them for the past 10 years. It's the juicy stuff I want to get to. Yeah. Um, like you are in a class that me and Mario can't speak on. And it is uh, the upper echelon of Tennessee State University. Let's talk about this Mr. TSU experience, being, wow. royalty, being royalty while on the yard. Like, let's talk about this experience. What led yeah. you to do this? I mean, you being the Carlton guy <laughs> of your life. And so Mr. TSU is probably like a twinkle in your eye, but you like, I mean, how I'm going to get there? Like, what does that look like? So let's talk about that path to that, man. Yeah. So it's interesting. I always shout out Cool Mill. Cool Mill is is my guy. Um, but however, I did not know Cool Mill um, until after school. So Cool Mill was um, one of the former Mr. Tennessee State University's Reginald Cool Mill Sharif. Um, and truly um, is one of my mentors and friends to this day, but he was my mentor before I met him. And so even though I wasn't going to college, college was not on my path, I had never seen a cool guy like Cool Mill until I opened up this 
yearbook of my sister. So my sister used to, to bring home her pictures, you know, back in the day when you had to go develop the pictures. So when she would develop her pictures from coming back from school, we would go through all her pictures. She'd tell me stories. And then she brought her yearbook home one year. And when she brought her yearbook home, I opened it up to this two page spread. And it was the coolest guy I'd ever seen in my life. I had never seen, you know, we got Ebony, we got Essence, we got Jet, we got all of these, these magazines that portray Black excellence. I had never met someone that was young and seen someone who was young who looked like Black excellence, and they were an everyday person. They weren't a celebrity. They weren't a star. He was just cool mill. And so I was like, I, I want to be him. <laughs> like I didn't care where I went I wasn't thinking about it being at a college I was just like I have never seen someone move a crowd like this and again let me tell you this was in the late 90s so uh there was no video I didn't see the video of this I'm this seeing so action through photographs and I'm like he's so cool that his energy is coming through the page so that is when I went to school again Carlton worked at Fulton High School. I was I was um, the drum major in the band. I was the student body president. And so I had learned my space amongst my classmates. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was afraid that that wouldn't translate when I came to TSU, because, again, I, I, I didn't think that Carlton would work. Mm -hmm. And and I need to stop saying Carlton. It was it was Charlie. I, I I have I, my name was Charlie my whole life. Like my my parents, my family, my friends, I, they have no clue to this day. They're like, who is this Charles guy that just popped up out of nowhere? <laughs> so Charlie came to TSU and Charlie was was scared, even though my sister was there. My sister already had her own life. She was a senior. She had a boyfriend. So she already was at TSU having the time of her life. And then here comes her, her younger brother, who is scared out of his mind. When I tell you, I was so afraid because I just didn't think that I would translate at a black school. And and what was interesting about that is that I I am a fan of the culture. I am the culture. When I tell you when I was younger, all I did was listen to rap and listen to, you know, just like everybody else. But I did that at home. And then I went and portrayed something different at school to, to make it work. So when I got to TSU, the culture showed up. And after being afraid, after being nervous, I was like, I've got to I've got to show up differently. And so that's when Charles in Charge was birthed. Charles in Charge was birthed out of me having a conversation with me. And yes, I talked to myself. I'd be like, yo, self, you got to get it together. So that's why I have a lot of different names and a lot of different characters, because it's like a conference when I start talking to myself. I'm like, Charlie, yo, chill. Chaz, get it together. Charles in charge, come forth. So, you know, I got that whole Beyonce yeah, thing. Here in the mirror. Yeah, you know, you, you, you know how it goes. So when Charles in charge came forth, Charles in charge was my ambition it was my leadership it was my fire it was my drive it was my creativity um and so charles in charge said you can accomplish exactly what you want to accomplish and so one of those goals was to be mr tsu and so um i aligned myself um on SGA, I served on SGA. Um, I did a lot of things um, to help out the position of Mr. TSU before I got the position of Mr. TSU. And I was in a meeting with a other um, with a former Mr. TSU, Rico Chappelle. Shout out to Rico Chappelle. He crowned me. Um, and they were looking for people to help kind of move the position forward. And so they were kind of sitting there talking about, like, we need someone to run who kind of understands what the position can be. And, and we can kind of put that person forward and they can speak and they can do all these things. I'm sitting there like, y'all know I want to run for Mr. TSU. Um, <laughs> like, I am I, the like, I'm like, I'm ready. Tag me in. So, so. <laughs> So I did. And and so um, I went in with that goal. My goal was not 
it started out to be like cool mill but then the goal became we need mr tsu we need this position in this role to show up and be a position that stands beside miss tsu all year long so the history of mr tsu it was just a position for homecoming so you you were you had the pageant on tuesday you participated in coronation on wednesday participated in the game on saturday and then it's like thank you very much for your service we don't need you anymore and so it, it, and it was that cutthroat. It was that cutthroat. So to come along and present something that could last all year long and that Dr. Hefner used, um, Dale Williams, who was an advisor, used, and they were like, no, you can do this all year long. We, we'll, we'll let you speak. We'll let you um, lead sessions and seminars. I was able to get a wardrobe. Um, I got a three suit wardrobe and I was able to get the position to be a voting member of student um, union board of governors. So all in that time was able to push things forward. So that's that's my Mr. TSU. This show is about giving people their flowers, man. And, and I didn't I don't think we got really close until later in the tenure of us being at Tennessee State. But yeah. you never know who watching you, man. And I knew. When I saw you, I'm like, this dude different. He like carry himself like he don't need an entourage. It's just him. But when he's walking, he it's an entourage. It's like yes. he's, he's like a, a force. And it's just like, who this dude, man? Like he like popping like straight up. This is somebody on the outside looking in, seeing this this aura around you. And then you run from his tears. You are like, oh, he lit now. And then to see you progress into your career and you know all things you've done and then when you run for alumni president i'm like this is like destined like i i just knew this would happen for you one day i just didn't know there was your inspiration or goals you know what i'm saying so to hear that you run from this tsu i'm like that's you here you tsu alumni president it's like this is like what he does and like i said this show about giving your flowers watch you from afar watching you grow you are in the places where you're supposed to be, your path, you blazing it. Uh, I'm inspired, and I just hope that the young kids and the younger generation are watching because you are it, man. You are you are needed, and we appreciate your service. Thank you. That means a lot. Like that, to touch me. Thank you. And hey, I got never tested school. You never had an authorized with you. You had the chicks with your ball. I was like, <laughs> oh, it's not a pocket. <laughs> 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 so you always got to keep a baddie with you because that's why I told someone. I was like, you know what? It's ladies' night every day. <laughs> if I'm trying to get in, I got to roll with the baddies. Stella, you talking about your sister? So she has like a like a star. Like she discovered a star for NASA. Yeah. So she was in an internship um, with NASA her senior mm -hmm. year, and so she was given a star, and so she had to she had to name it, study it. Um, so she had to do all the, the configurations of how far it is and all of the stuff that I don't know. I just be like, there's a star. Yeah. Up in the sky. I know the constellations, but like she knows like the the how much gas the star has. It was pretty cool. It's dope. How was that that conversation you going from a, a you know, predominantly white high school to a HBCU? Like, so was it pushing involved? Like, hey, Charles, this is where you going? OK, sis, here I come. God is good. So let me tell you, God, now, now you're about to get me in a, another, another zone. But when I tell you that my sister and I are very connected, we're very close. Um, I had a dream. Not like Dr. King, like I had my own dream. <laughs> um, I had a dream and she had a dream the same night. Wow. And I called my sister and I said, guess what? I had a dream <laughs> that she's like, I know you're going to TSU. And that was how that went. Wow. It was, there was like, I, I didn't think of anything else. I, like I said, I had no other option, no other choice. I was not going to Tennessee State University until I had that dream. And when my sister said, I know you're going to TSU, I said, okay, that's what it is. And so I've always, when I tell you every move that I've ever made in my life, God has told me about it. It will be in the in a dream, it, even down to living in New York. I was walking down the street in 2008. I moved out here. I started the contract in 2012. I was walking down the street and I just paused. It's like almost shocked me. And it was like, you live here. Wow. And 
I just completely felt comfortable with the thought of me living in New York City. And I never that wasn't even in my my brain. And and then in 2012, the opportunity to work in New York City came. And I was like, absolutely, because I already knew it was coming. So like that, that's that's how that went. It was really a dream. And I mean, no, I'm no plans, no other choices. It was a dream. And then I started doing the work to go. Similar to kind of yours. So I didn't have a dream, but being being born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee, coming from a small kind of like it was a hundred and eight people in my class to graduate. I was number 14. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm popping. Like, I'm number 14. I go to these other schools. They like, oh, I'm I, I'm like a three eight, but I'm like number 300 and something. I'm like, oh. So it matters, you know, so like numbers matter. But um, I wanted to go to a big school. So I told my parents, I'm like, man, I'm going to UT, UT Knoxville. And I'm like, it's like eight, it's like eight hours away. Like it's a big school. They'd be on TV. Like I want to go there. And, you know, I come in the house for playing ball one day. My auntie, my cousin there. And they're like, where are you going to school? I'm like, man, I worried my application come back from uh, UT. They was like, you ever thought about going to HBCU? I'm like, nah, like, nah. They like, you know, the class would be here. I'm like, nah, they be shooting at the class. Like, I ain't going there. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so she was like, but, you know, it's like, you won't be a number, you won't be a number, you know, financial aid, like, kind of holds your hand and the classrooms are smaller. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm waiting on my application to come in the mailbox, my acceptance letter. And they was like, just put in the application to TSU and see what happens. Man, I swear, two weeks later, check the mail, T- Tennessee State and mail. I'm like, what is this? You've been accepted. I'm like, man, they called somebody. I went to orientation. I said, leave me here. Yeah. Like, TSU is popping. Forget UT Knox. I ain't waiting on that no more. So uh, to your point, you know, it's just kind of cool to hear people's stories on how they end up at an HBCU. It's never really like a goal of ours. Years ago, now HBCUs are popping. People want to go there because of the hype. But it's like, we were like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm going to try it out. But uh, it's just cool to hear your story, man, and having a dream. That, that's dope, man. What about the, um, the, the teaching to, to keep people out of trouble in the state of Missouri had New York adopted? I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't get that. So, so go over that. So when, when you start looking at juvenile justice um, as a whole, the whole goal for us is, of course, as the word says, is to have justice for our youth. And, you know, our youth are sent to these correctional facilities, and a lot of times they're overbooked. They have about 200 to 300 kids in them. And so in Missouri, we had a facility called the the Boonville Correctional Facility. And at one point in time, that was one of those facilities that had over 200 kids in it. And so when you have that, you have higher chance of abuse. You have um, higher chance of kids coming into the program, learning worse behaviors because they're having to fit in. So you may have had someone who had a small crime. They stole something in there with someone who attempted murder. And so what happens is those kids that have lesser crimes have to defend themselves against the kids that committed larger crimes or that are in gangs. Because again, like in Missouri, so imagine Missouri, a lot of people are like, well, what goes on Missouri? Missouri, first of all, St. Louis is the murder capital of the world. Um, And so when people think about Missouri, what people forget is that what happens when you get ran out of the East Coast? You migrate to Missouri. What happens when you get thrown out of the west coast you migrate to missouri so a lot of the crime that happened in the north the south the east and the west ended up in missouri and so our crime was really high and so what we had to do um this happened about i want to say about 40 years ago they decided to break down those systems and put the kids into smaller homes with about eight to 12 youth and put them back in their city. Because what was happening was they were sending them to Boonville with a rural staff. So you have these kids that have a lingo from the city and these these staff from the rural communities, they don't know how to interact with them. They can't develop the relationship, which is what's important to work with you. And so what they would do is they would abuse the kids to get them to mind. They would they would put the kids against each other to get them to, uh, to to conform. And so the Missouri approach, again, focuses on smaller groups so that we can, if it's their birthday, we can celebrate their birthday. If um, there's a death anniversary of someone that they love, we can be aware of that and we can provide them therapy. So it's just, the smaller the amount of 
members in the group, the more attention you can give them. And so instead of them just doing their time and getting out, what they do is they're able to do their time and receive therapy, receive treatment, um, do things that kids do. You know, we we do music therapy. We do. Um, I actually performed at Carnegie Hall through this this approach. Um, my program did a CD. Um, with a program with Carnegie Hall, and we actually performed at Carnegie Hall. And so my my whole thing was, they're like, these kids don't want to do this. I was like, watch. Okay, so you do a verse, I'll do the hook. You do a verse. So like, I was literally in there, in the studio, working with the kids. And some of the staff were like, the kids don't want to do this. This is whack. They don't want to do it. I was like, okay, watch me work. So that's my job. My job is to show them how do you work with kids. And so we produce albums and there was the first album that we produced, I'm on it singing a hook because wow. that's how I had to engage them to be excited about it because I'm like, yeah, well, I got a hook. You, you got a verse. So that's, that's how we did that. So, yeah, so it's, it's all about group therapeutic approach. Man, you, you hear the saying, like when it comes to a child, you want to meet them where they're at. Like, yeah. so like it's a whole bunch of, Older people pointing at children, you should do this, you should do that. In my day, if you meet them where they are, then you can get to them. And it sounds like what you're doing is getting to them now. So that's that's awesome. And Carnegie Hall, that's awesome. Yeah, you had, uh, you, you had, you had a tough song and, and you yeah. come on. We came as we we came as we are because again, the kids didn't have that. So we we actually we dressed them up, but that's that's also a, a cool. I think it's kind of cool to do things like this because this is a side of me that people people don't get to see because they usually see the dressed up me. They don't see the the down to earth and the me that goes in there in my sweatpants that goes in there and just the, in a t-shirt and a button up because the, the goal is to, again, not make them ashamed of their circumstances. So again, they can't afford certain clothes. They can't dress like what we would think is appropriate for some of those spaces. So we teach them to do the best that they can with what they have. And so in order to help them, we have to do the same. So I can't, I couldn't go in there with my tux because you know I would I would have went in there with the tux, <laughs> have my bow tie popping, but I went in there and and you know represent with them. So yeah, it was a cool experience. Let's talk about a day in the life as being TSU alumni president. I ran into you a couple times. We didn't bump into each other. I'm like, what you doing here? You like, man, I'm I'm in and out. You yeah, know? like man, like you do so much for the school. You're moving around. You're involved in all these different initiatives. And what's a day in the life um, for the TSU alumni president? Man, it, it's wild. Let me tell you, I'm so proud of TSU. Let me let me start there. When I tell you to be able to wake up and it be a part of my passion and my my role to brag on TSU, there's so much content. There are so many alumni that are doing awesome things that I never run out of things to brag about with Tennessee State University. Just within this year, um, Tennessee State University has embarked Laker games, Disney, Disneyland, um, the Rose Bowl parade, um, you know, and that's just the band. So then I think further down the line, I'm meeting the vice president of the United States mm -hmm. and inducting her into the alumni association because she is an honorary and alum now. And, and, you know, so to have a picture with Kamala Harris, those are the things that this role has blessed me with. Um, and so, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. I'm, I'm thankful for what I've been given in this role. It's placed me in rooms that sometimes I don't know I belong in or I don't feel comfortable in, but I'm learning to be comfortable in some of those rooms with some of the people that I'm, I'm in. But as far as my day-to-day, -day, I wake up and there's already a hundred emails. Um, you know, alums have ideas. Alum have connections. Alum have things that they um, want to see improved at the school. One of the things about my age, I am accessible to the students. So I do a lot of counseling of students. You know, I, I remember I was at the um, the NBA All-Star game <laughs> called me and they were going through a crisis and so i couldn't be like yo i'm here at this nba all-star game no i i i stepped aside 
And I talk to them because, again, that that is what this role requires. It requires me to be there for the students, for the alumni, for the faculty and the staff. I have some of the dopest relationships with the the faculty and the staff. They have become my coworkers. I do a lot of uh, finding money so that I'm a fundraiser. Um, that's a lot of what I do. Um, I, I have to represent the alumni association, so I do a lot of speaking. You know, the pandemic. I am a pro at getting this ring light up because I all I did was. Zoom, 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 zoom. That's all I did during the pandemic. So, um, yeah. So that's that's a day in the life. I do I do a lot of traveling. It's cool because TSU. I was just talking to public relations today. TSU is a an influencer school now. You know, at one point in time, a school was a school. An institution is an institution. A college is a college. Tennessee State University is the culture. It's a part of the culture and it is an influencer within itself. So everyone who is associated with TSU now has to be an influencer. So, you know, that's one of the other things that I'm I'm really enjoying is that it's given me another social life um, outside of the one I already had following TSU around and telling the story for alumni and representing alumni. Seeing TSU on like viral videos, like yeah. Texas State University, it's like, wow, I went to school there. Like they lit, like they yeah. enjoy themselves. Like I'm like, that's what it's about, man. It's about enjoying yourself, having a good time, not like doing anything crazy, but just having a good time, you know, and that's what it's about. So it's, yeah. it's, it's good to hear that. But let's talk about some adversity you probably uh I went through with this kind of being in this role. I'm pretty sure you're probably the youngest alumni president. So I know these these seasoned vets are like, <laughs> hey, young blood, like this ain't how we do it. You know, like we need you to get over here with how we roll. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is. It, it, wow. It, 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 it's it comes with its days. Yeah, you know, like they say, my good days outweigh my bad days. So I won't complain, but I'll tell you about it. So let me tell you about it. It was a challenge for me because I think for me, I, first of all, um, I, my parents are incredible, uh, but my parents were a part of the working world. Like they, they're, they're educators. And so when I was born, my, my parents took their time and then I lived next door to my grandmother. And so my grandmother became my daycare, became my kindergarten, became my babysitter, my, every, so I am one of those grandma's boys. Um, you know, um, I, my grandmother like was very, very present in my life, um, all the way to the end. Um, and so I think that for me, it shocked me that I had such difficulty with some of the older alum because it's like, I, I thought I was made for this. Like I thought I was made to connect with, with various generations. But I think that a mistake that I made, um, Sometimes when you have an idea, you have to remind people that you didn't think that their idea wasn't a bad idea and what they already did wasn't good enough. Um, and, you know, I want my my father's grandmother. So I, I, the grandmother I speak of is my mother's grandmother. Um, but my father's mother, my other grandmother reminded me of something when my father actually um, went out and bought her a, a dining room table. And she went completely off because she was like, there's nothing wrong with my dining room table. What are you saying? Wrong with my dining room table? Like she went off on him, went off on the movers and told them to take that table back to where they got it from. And anyone else who was walking past the street caught it that day. <laughs> that was a major lesson that I didn't incorporate into the presidency. And so there are a lot of things that because of the pandemic, not only was I, um, and they may have to check this, um, not only have I been the youngest president, I'm also the first president to go through a pandemic. I'm the pandemic president. Yeah. And so I think that because we went through it so smoothly, like as an alumni association, we have programming. We, we put in things um, to make sure that everyone stayed connected. They didn't see a sweat. So I don't think that people really take the time to realize, yo, do y'all realize that we really went through a pandemic and the organization came out on the other side stronger? Like, mm -hmm. I don't think that they they see that because in order to do that, we had to say that there were certain processes that could be better.
And so when you do that, and this is just a, 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 a message for leaders out there. They're, they're, I'm not the only leader. I'm not the only one that works with multi-generations. I'm not the only one who works with, with diversity. When you see an area that could be better, you have to help people see that they deserve better and that they want better. You can't just tell them you're going to give them something better because they resist that. So I think that that's where a lot of my challenges come from. On the other side, if I had days where I was like, I can't do this anymore, I I don't. And I had wonderful, wonderful people keep me focused and be like, you got to keep going and you got to stick with this. Um, But on the other side of all of that, I see the error. in, in communication, I see the error in sometimes not finding. You also have to find value for everyone. You have to find something for everyone to do. You have to find a way to connect everyone to the puzzle. And one of the biggest things that I wanted to do was be inclusive because they had a problem with, with having young people involved. So I thought that my job was to help include younger people. And I'm actually tasked with the others to, to figure out how to include all people. So that's that's been my challenge but i made it through man that's great so you've been in all these leadership positions between your position now of course uh the president of alumni association even back to mr tsu what's the number one trait that you think helps you and as a leader what's the number one trait that allows you to continue to excel in your positions Mm. um creativity one being able to to understand how to use templates Nothing that I do has not been done before. Nothing that you see me do has not been seen before. My gift is I can take something from over here and put it over there and make you think I came up with it over here, but I saw it over there first. I just put, I just put my big blue spin on it. I just put I just put my Charles in charge on it. So I think that that's my that's my number one gift is that I don't reinvent the wheel. I just represent the wheel. And so that's that's what my gift has been. I also understand relevancy really well. I know it, and and to kind of take you back, entertainment is my number one love. I am an entertainer in every single thing that I do. When I work in the facility with my youth, I am an entertainer. When I'm a trainer, when I'm a speaker, when I'm in church, when I'm playing the piano, I learn how to be an entertainer in all of those spaces. Some of those spaces don't require entertainment, some people would think. I believe all spaces require entertainment. So that's the other trait that I bring to the table as a leader is that I'm also an entertainer and you don't know that you're being entertained until it's over. You're like, that was actually entertaining. And I, and I, and I actually meant to do that. Yeah. When, when you went for public office, man, I, I don't know. I don't know that. I, I don't know if I can't, I'm, I'm a little bit, I had to scale back to be the alumni president. I'm a little bit wild. I have fun in life, and so you I'm a little bit nervous. You, you, you about to move to DC? You gonna be on somebody's <laughs> somebody doing something, and you are gonna be on TV with the suit on? We like, see, I knew, I knew, I knew he was on the next. He was on the next one. <laughs> he going on through the steps, man. And I'm just sitting up here thinking, like, man, just think about all the people that have been disappointed had you to woke up one morning and said, "I can't do TSU with president. No, I can't do this." Yeah. You, so many people have been like, what you mean? You'd have been like, oh, I ain't even know it was like that. Yeah. Like, you have an influence, man, and we appreciate the service that you provide, you know, and um, I just want to keep reiterating that because you are the you are a great person in this seat. And um, I mean, I don't think nobody else going to do it like you, man. And that's, that's just going to leave some bigger shoes to feel for the next person. But I hope they them dunks. <laughs> <laughs> somebody get somebody watching this podcast give me these dunks <laughs> let's, get, let's get the woman president some dunks in his, i'm gonna have to work on that for you man i'm gonna look out for you i'm gonna see what i can do what size you are well please and thank right, you i'm gonna look out i'm gonna look out you, <laughs> pair of these. I don't, you don't need to be walk, you need to have your suit on and a pair of these you know it would be so swell Yes, <laughs> and you already got the OG hat to match. Um, <laughs> yeah, throw that in there. Is bro. that the cameo <laughs> that I needed to make right now? Is this I, I had it right here just for you? <laughs> <laughs> My man, yeah, I'm proud, a proud OG. Where Did you ever purged? No, I wasn't. I was scared mm-hmm. to death, you though. Like, what is about to happen? 
I, I, was, I was nervous. I was like, I've got to pay these bills. Somebody help me. Like my parents, my parents were good. They sent two kids to TSU and, and my mom sent that check. And she, she would always be like, go pay this on time because she knows I'm absent minded. So I was not purged because my mom held me down. I must say that she did help hold me down. And I'm waiting at financial aid line till I get my letters and say, I am confirmed because I'm like, if I walk out these doors and you tell me I'm going to do it tomorrow, I'm getting purged. I'm going to be sitting on the side of the steps like all these other folks mad about it. They lost their class. And now they're saying, oh, yeah, go register for the time of their class that you want because it's available now. Yeah. Like, like, I ain't being that person, man. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't. Shout out to Jarita Powell. Jarita Powell from Memphis, one of my best friends in the world, because I would not have made it through TSU without Jarita, because, again, I'm absent minded. So I can do all this leadership stuff, but I'm all like all the stuff that I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to be there for school, but I'm here being student government stuff. <laughs> I would forget to register for class. I'd be like, what classes am I supposed to do? And Trita would be like, just do all the classes I'm doing. So I had most <laughs> every single class that Drita had most of my TSU experience because, wow. because I would just forget to do it. And she'd be like, come on, let's just do your class. So shout out to Drita. See, that's another thing people don't understand. You, you don't get that at a PWI. Like she just literally was like, I can I can't let you like like be out here like that because she could have been like oh, he don't care you register oh, I forget oh well, I am like she looked yeah. out and that's what people do and yeah. that's how me and, that's how me and Mario met you know just looking out. Sean team, this team baby, and what he do he slid the book, slid the book under Six the door. Six eleven, <laughs> slide the books under the door no more. They do no more. And that's just what we do. It's like. I can't let you just be out here not good. Like, we're going to get through this thing together. We're going to be at graduation like, man, bro, we want for you. No, we want for you. No, we want for you. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, like, we, we we carry each other, man, to the to the finish line. And so that's that's cool to hear. Yeah, that's what I love about TSU. It's it, like, I really had no clue. My, my alumni life was, I'll be honest, my alumni life was better than my TSU life. Because mm -hmm. when I was in school, I was so focused that my fun was in fun moments, but my fun wasn't as sporadic and it wasn't as genuine as it is now on the alumni side. And, you know, I've engaged with people. I've met people. I was so, when I tell you, I spent most of my TSU years still believing that no one was accepting me like that. I mean, even as people would vote for me, even as I would win these, these roles, I still felt the entire time that I was not still accepted. It's real, you know, like those things, like self-esteem. And, and I like to be honest about that because that that's the work that I do. When I am in these situations where people see my confidence, I also like to remind people of my insecurities and, and of the days that I doubt myself in, in those moments. And like I said, through most of this, my college experience, I doubted myself. I was constantly having to prove myself and a lot of times not to others, to myself. And mm -hmm. so when I graduated, that's when I found all of my beautiful cousins and all of my like had no clue that I had such an awesome TSU family because I thought it was going to be over. I thought you graduate and you don't see these people ever again. I just I really did. No, it, nothing could have prepared me to know that I would see everyone all the time in different places, <laughs> in different states, in different cities, in different countries. I had no clue that I would see some people more than I see my family. I like I, I see a lot of people multiple times a year and I don't even get to see my family that much. So um, yeah. so, yeah. so I love that about TSU. I went to predominantly black schools, but then in high school, I went to predominantly white school. So I wanted to go to an HBCU to kind of like define myself and be like around like minded people. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you see you watch TV. It's so many negative stereotypes about us. And I just wanted to be around just around us and just engulf myself in the culture, man. So that's um that's, that's, that's awesome. So talk about TSU, uh, you being the, um, you know, the president, Mr. Prez, yeah. where do you see TSU in 10 years? And, and also talk about HBCUs because it's a big yeah. push about HBCUs. You know, um, it's, it's all about HBCUs now. You have corporate companies pushing HBCUs now. So what do you think? Hey, uh, yeah, of course, yeah, shout out to Dion. Right. No, 
Yeah. Even them that left yeah, us, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? That yeah, Coach Prime. <laughs> Coach Prime. <laughs> <laughs> curve with the pocket, but yeah, so in the next 10 years, what do you see HBCUs and then what do you see TSU in the next 10 years? So first of all, HBCUs, the culture is taking over. And, and I think that that is what is beautiful about HBCUs is that the whole goal of an HBCU was to give Blacks an opportunity to have an education. You think of the fact that there were schools that would not allow us to go to them. And then the doors of HBCUs were open for us to have opportunities, for us to be able to get our education, for us to be able to rest. I think that HBCUs have brought so much rest to so many people that look like us because we get to wake up and not worry about being Black. Or just that period of our life. We don't have to worry about being twice as good. We don't have to worry about, did I pronounce that correctly? Did I use the right tone? And so I think that the gift that HBCUs give our people, the gift that our HBCUs give us to be able to be confident and comfortable, that allows us to perform greater. And so I think that there are going to be more, more doctors, more lawyers, more scientists, more teachers, more musicians, more dancers, more um, engineers coming out of HBCUs because it's safe to say, I went to an HBCU and no one's going to turn their nose down at it. No one's going to say that you went to a less than best school. They're going to say you went to an excellent school and you have an excellent degree and you're going to serve the world in excellence. So that is the first projection that I see that, that, that the whole stereotype that used to be attached to TSU of being like almost we or, or to other HBCUs like you you chose to go here did you all have to fight people saying you went to the orange and white school I don't know if that that okay see being from Missouri most people when I said I went to Tennessee State University they thought I went to UT. Oh, UT. Oh. Yeah. And okay. so I'd be like no I'm not the orange and white school I'm the blue and white school and mm. so to be 20 years later and i don't have to explain to people that i went to the blue and white school and not the orange and white school that's the impact of the culture and that's the impact of hbcu so that's one i think the tsu has been blessed we are one of the first we're trailblazers we've always been trailblazers in so many fields in technology um, in athletics and so our campus is also going to be a trailblazing campus amongst other HBCUs. Um, of course, as y'all know, we received uh, a portion of the land grant funding. And so that's going to change the look of TSU. We're going to be able to make repairs. We're going to be able to, to build um, dorms. We're going to be able to build a new engineering building um, with those funds. So the look of Tennessee State University is just going to look like money. People are going to be like, they got money. They like, they really, they're going to see that we have money and great equipment allows us to be greater so when we have better resources better facilities better dorms as you know i've heard coach prime say when you look better you do better so when we are walking around a beautiful campus it's going to require our students to dress it's going to require them to walk and talk and interact in excellence because they're walking in excellence so that's what i see for the next 10 years of tsu i, I just see an excellent walk i see an excellent um, just a pride. I've always wanted TSU to have a similar network that schools like um, Harvard, um, schools um, like Howard, schools um, like Spelman and Morehouse, they have. It's almost like there's a secret society that you went to this university and it plugs you into jobs and it plugs you into resources. And I think that TSU, we have that informally. But I want it to be stronger and I want it to be more organized. So that's my goal and that's my hope and that's my wish for TSU. So it's not what do I think it's going to look like. My goal and my wish for TSU is that we're a strong network, that we have the resources that we need, um, that our alumni are giving back, that our alumni are connecting with the students, um, our, our alumni are being pipelines for our students in companies and and, and um, all, all types of things. So those are my goals for, for TSU. I I've heard people say they be jealous of our network because <laughs> think about this. We can go to L.A. Me, yeah. you, Mario, we go to L.A. We call two, three people. 
It's going to be 10, 15 people TSU at this event randomly. Hey, just call us and I know. We go to Atlanta. We could be easily 20 deep if everybody available. You go, you go to any big city. TSU deep. And I've heard people say like, yo, you, you could go to any city. You call two TSU people and it's going to be 15 of y'all there. They be like, y'all always in numbers. And I'm just like, it's a family, man. Like, and so even to like what you were saying earlier about it being a family, like we'll all be together. So the Heritage Classic. And then it's like, hey, man, see you in a couple of weeks at home. Come on. See you a couple of weeks at the game or see you in a couple of weeks at so-and-so wedding or so-and-so baby shower. And it's just like, man, it's so dope. Like we see each other so many times a year and we don't really think about it. And then when all these life events happen, it's like, Man, I just saw this fool like three weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I always, I'm seeing him again in three months, you know, uh, but I don't take him for granted either. You know, we always kick it like it's our, like, you know, we don't know what's going to happen, you know, c- considering COVID and everything. But yeah, the TSU family, the network is so strong, man. And I'm, it's something I'm so proud to be a part of um, just walking around with TSU gear on and people look at me they nod you know it's like yeah they know you know like they know something about tennessee state if they don't know anything they probably heard about it you know now i do from time to time get people say oh is that the school in no 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 no. it's the school in nashville don't try to play with houston stuff no no no. (laughs) right like that TX. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's it's super cool. But let's talk about the culture because that's what this uh, our show is about. Yeah. And let's talk about the culture TSU from when we were at school. It's kind of what you're seeing now. Like, what are some things that you've seen change, or some things that you've seen just has evolved um, into like you know excellence. Yeah. So when I think about the culture, I think about, first of all, I'm in love with the culture, whatever the culture is. I am addicted to it. I love it. I am so proud to be a part of it. Um, And I think the TSU alums understand the culture like we understand how to show up famous like do you understand that that we will not have been on nobody's show will have not been on nobody's nothing and we walk like we are on red carpet every day and <laughs> i right? tell you <laughs> yeah yeah we, we all just live it over that and and i love it and and i think that that is an attitude that is is still there that air of a, a, a Wednesday, wonderful Wednesday, everyone dressing up, everyone being seen, people got their shades on, opening up, walking through, knowing how to, it took years for me to stop hearing music as I walked. Like, <laughs> I felt like there was music all the time when I was walking because there was probably a DJ there and yeah. there was probably music while I was walking. That That is the culture that I love that, that and, and we used it for TSU NAA. We used it um, recently for homecoming, TSU famous. That's something that we're gonna be rolling out in, in just that whole concept. And I think that sometimes we, to a fault, we struggle because we are so content in the fact that we are who we are. We're funny. We're fun. We're stylish. We're cool. That sometimes we forget to do some of the serious things <laughs> that come along with being alone because we, we focus on just the fact that that we showed up and we showed out. So I, I think that that's the, the culture change is that I think that we have to attach kind of like what they've done. I I know that you probably heard of one party, one purpose, that whole concept of we're going to have to attach purpose to our party because we, we party like none other. We just want to make sure that we always keep a purpose attached to the party because TSU is the greatest party ever. I have people who come to TSU's homecoming who did not go to TSU and they feel loved and they feel embraced and they feel like they are, they're proud of it. I have coworkers that since I have become the national president, they have fallen in love with TSU. And I'm like, we want TSU clothes. So like I have recycled some of my um, hoodies and things and given them to staff that did not go to TSU because they just want to rep it. So they want to be a part of the coach. They do. And I think so that's that's what that so we are we are the culture. When I think of Atlanta, I feel like Atlanta, the so when people think of the industry and they mention the culture, they're talking about TSU. We did it first. <laughs> I, I know that that's I know that that's jumping out there, but that that 
the Usher residency looks like a Mr. TSU pageant. I'm just <laughs> saying. I hope yo shit, Prince. I'm just saying. It, it, like all of this stuff, we did this before there was YouTube, before there was Twitter, before there was Facebook, before there was MySpace. We created shows and they were magical and memorable because we have been the culture. I tell people, you want to see a real Greek probate show? It's in the Gentry Center or in the hole, and it's packed out like it's a basketball game or a football yeah. game. It's yeah. a probate show. It ain't like on Howard's yard. I worked at Howard, but it'd be on the yard, and it'd be a yeah. couple people there, and it'd be cool and intimate. But I'm like, at TSU, we got to have ours in the basketball arena because it's going to be, it's, it's we're going to pack it out. Like, yeah. it's nothing like it, you know? So, people don't understand. I have to pull out these pictures and these videos and be like, this was 20 years ago. This is what we was doing. Like, this is normal. Like, you better get there on time because you don't, you might not get in. <laughs> it's a TSU event. Like, you, you better get there early. TSU tea party. You can't get tickets to get in. You get there too late. You're not getting in. You at the back of the line with a ticket. They like, we packed. Like you should have came here two hours ago. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if, if, if you had one tips uh, for a student graduating, so he or she's a senior um, about to go to the world, start their career. What tip would you give them? Ooh, we, that's going to be good right here. <laughs> have someone older, have someone younger and have someone that is doing something completely different than you in your ear. Because we, we we need the wisdom of our elders. We need the relevancy of those who are younger. And we always need to be challenged. We never need to be comfortable. And so always have that person who is completely opposite that would just you not think that they have something for you. That is the person that will move you to the next level. Because I've always heard and I've always felt and I've always experienced that your next self is on the other side of everything that you won't do right now. That you're afraid to do everything that you think that is not you. That is why you are not that yet. It's because you are afraid mm. of that next. So find someone who is completely opposite of you to take you higher. You got you got to keep with the young folks, man, because they just between TikTok, we yeah. all Instagram TikTok, but just the general like like their vibe, what they got going on tech wise. It's always good to to tap in. It's frustrating though to not to have that but then being the older person now example talking to my nephew about something like hey oh that is 20 years ago and i'm like if you just listen i'm giving you free game yeah. and in 20 years you're gonna be like man if i would listen to my uncle i'm like nephew just just a little bit just he, he, man it was 20 years ago uh, we do it like this now i'm like okay all right but you're a student because okay. I am a student of my nephew. And I thought that I was a teacher. The, <laughs> that is the most beautiful thing that I've seen change in my dynamic with me and my nephew. I've seen that I ask him questions. Every, he's like my research. Like I ask him what's important to him. What, what, what about things that he's seen me do? I ask his feedback about it. Um, I, I utilize him for working with the youth that I work with. Cause I need to know what are some of the things that you all like at your age, being a young, he's 14. I, I work with kids that are 14. So I need to know how to best reach out to them. So I have become his student. Um, I had a, I actually had a, a 70 plus year old alum say that to me. She said, you're my mentor. Wow. And, and she's like, we can have mentors at every age. And she's like, wow. you're, you're mentoring me because we were talking about social media and we were talking about social presence and things like that. And so, yeah, so yeah, you, you learn from everybody, learn from as many people as you can. I think that's the best thing about this role. Even I've been placed in a position to learn from so many people, from the students, from, from faculty, just everywhere I look, someone's teaching me something. And I don't, sometimes I don't know it until later that I, well, they taught me how to do that better. I learned how to do meetings better. I learned how to um, how to to care about people and and be more valuable. I learned a lot with this. So we have to ask since you are El Presidente. So yes. us as alumni and all the alumni that you know were blessed to the to, to watch our pie our show. Uh, like what, what can we do to support the, the alumni association? So the first thing is join. So TSU alumni online.org again, TSU alumni online.org. Um, there is a, a, a 
a place for you, whether it be um, with the affinity group, which would be like your your fraternities, your sororities, the young alumni, the band, um, engineering, uh, those are available. And then most cities um, have a chapter. So, you know, if you want to be involved in the chapter at the chapter level, I encourage people to get involved. And it's like, why do you get involved? Because again, you're paying to be a part of the one, the part of the network. Um, you're also um, paying to be a part of the voice, the collective voice and um, and to be involved, all of those things, because I think that in every city, there should be a tiger in every city, in every chapter, there should be someone who does what someone coming to that city needs. And so I think that that's the you, you join the database. So that's first of all. Second of all is give. Um, you know, you ha you have to identify what area of the university you want to give to. And, you know, it, it, the, I think that that's the mistake sometimes people make. They, they're like, well, I don't know where my money is going to. I don't know why. Because you can choose wherever you want your money to go to. Yes. If you don't care where your money goes to, then you can just give it to the school and they will give it to the general fund and they will be able to spend it. But if you know that you want to give it to the band or you want to give it to the football team or the basketball team, you can give it exactly to who you want to give it to. So so make that decision. And, and I want to say, don't make excuses. You know, um, you don't make excuses. So why you don't do because CSU has already blessed you. And so I think that that we have to live past being extended students and live in the alumni experience. TSU has already blessed you. You 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 don't. It's not supposed to still be blessing you. It the people that you acquired, the memories that you acquired are still blessing you. But the university has new students to bless, new people to give an experience to. And so I, I run into so many alums. Who are like, oh, well, TSU's not doing this with their this, and they're not doing that with their that. So I'm not giving them anything. You already owe them. I would not make it through this life without being able to pick up my phone and there be a, a text from a tiger, without being able to pick up my phone and be able to call a tiger. Like literally, my whole day is my friends and tigers that help me get through the day. Wow. So if I'm giving just for that, I'm going to give for that because TSU already blessed me. They gave me that. So that's what I would say is, is stop making excuses for why you don't give and, and realize that TSU is already worth your time, already worth your money, already worth your talent, because it has blessed you with a career. It's blessed you with a network. It's blessed you with memories. It's blessed you with a, a whole support system. It's blessed. It's almost like Airbnb, because to your point, it's like I really can go anywhere and sleep on a couch. And, you know, everybody got their money up now. They got guest bedroom for you now. You ain't yeah, gonna sleep yeah. on the couch. Yeah. So, you know, so it, mattresses. No, yeah. no. We, we've graduated, we've elevated. So that that's what I would say. Um, and then mentor. You you must you in this life, you are you are responsible for a college student, at least one. Like, and, and that's the way I think I, I'm responsible. And these are some of the, my own principles that in life I'm responsible for an elderly person, and I start with one. And then it may turn into multiple, but I am a responsible for an elderly person. I'm responsible for uh, a, a, an elementary school kid, someone at every stage of life. I'm responsible for pouring into them because mm -hmm. what I've learned about mentorship is it goes both ways. One of the most beautiful things that um, a student that I mentored um two years ago. I still am in, in contact with them. Now, I don't call him mentor. Now, it's just a student I talk to or an alum that I talk to. I said, if you call me, if, if you need me, call me. If you need anything, just call me. And he turned around to me and said, yeah, and if you need me, call me. I was. It blew my mind because yeah. I, was, I wasn't thinking that it was going to be two ways. I wasn't thinking that I might have to pick up the phone and be like, yo, what's going on on campus? And he's my eyes and my ears. Yeah. Or I'm not thinking I may be having a rough day and he's hilarious and he just may get me to start laughing about something. So it's two way streets. So mentor. A standpoint of just being there and just helping the university. So this is my fifth year now. 
um, on the College of Business Alumni Board. And like any every time we have a meeting, every time we do something, I, I have like a sense of accomplishment. And because of your paper blessing, you know, now I'm on the uh, you know the, the foundation board. It's just like you, you feel I mean, you already feel good about your your university, but you just feel just way better when you're doing stuff and you're seeing some advice or some things you're doing, helping the university. So, so definitely everybody that's watching, man, please, please support, man, with your money, but then also uh, with, with, with your time as well. I, I grew up, uh, my, again, growing up, my, my grandmother was a, a house mother for a fraternity. She was a house mother and cook for a, a white fraternity. And I watched them, I watched them be alumni. And I watched them be alumni well. They were the the university, the college she was at was Westminster College. It's a very prestigious college. Actually, is where um, Winston Churchill delivered the Iron Curtain speech mm. at, in Fulton, Missouri at Westminster College. And so the fraternity house, she was a mother to them. And so I watched them all the way until she left this earth. The, those, the fraternity boys were her pallbearers mm. at her funeral. They, when she retired, they paid off her house. Wow. Um, she, so let me, let me bless you with this because this is forever special to me. I graduated in 2004. So did my grandma. Westminster College gave my grandmother an honorary degree because wow. her boys advocated for the fact that they said that they learned more from her than they did most of their professors. And so they they said it didn't set well with them that she did not have the same degree as they had. So in 2004, my grandmother traveled to Tennessee State University to see me get my degree. And when I went home, we celebrated her getting her college degree. Awesome. So I learned how to be an alum by watching what they did. I watched them come in and they they visited the people that mattered to them. They so they visited her. They 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 didn't just get drunk and they didn't just go to the parties. They <laughs> spread it out in what I call the all of the above. They they were all of the above. They they came and they had a good time. They visited people who mattered to them. They gave. They made sure that they went back to the fraternity house to make sure that the boys were taken care of. To make sure that they were keeping the house. Clean, clean to make sure that everything was taken care of. Um, and so, and then they would make time to go see the university president. They did all of the above. And I think that that's what I want to encourage TSU alums to do. Be everything. Don't just choose. This is not multiple choice. You don't have to choose A. You don't have to choose B. You don't have to choose C. If it is going to be multiple choice, do it all. Create your own lane. Do it all. You got. You, you can do it. You you can do that. There is a space for everyone to do something for TSU. And if you don't like what's presented to you, you create something else. That 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 was what I did with the Big Blue giveaway. You know, a lot of people um, participate in the Big Blue giveaway. This is ten years celebrating ten years of the Big Blue giveaway, and that was something. And I'll be honest, this is the first time you will get this. That was produced when I did not have a job and I was sleeping on my cousin's couch. Wow. People had no clue that that was what was going on. But I had moved to Las Vegas and I had wanted to um, jump start my speaking career. And so I said, let me go to Las Vegas. I'll live here. I can wake up. They can um, give me the, the travel money and I can pocket that because I won't have to travel and I'm just going to work these conferences. But in order to do that, I, I had to leave my job in Missouri to go there um, mm. to do that. So I, my cousin lived there. He was in the air force. He had a family. Um, they allowed me to come stay with them um, so that I could figure out my life in Las Vegas. And so I was sitting on the couch one day and it was the centennial. And I was sitting there and I was actually watching. And it's really crazy where you can get ideas and how people change. Um, I really wanted to be on The Apprentice. <laughs> I, I just wanted to be on The Apprentice. I told you I wanted to do reality TV. Um, and so this was before Trump became Trump. <laughs> Trump back then, but, <laughs> but I will never forget watching an episode of The Apprentice and he fired her name was brandy she was a, a former playboy bunny and he he fired her because he was like well did you call hugh hefner and she's like no i didn't call him he's like you're fired because you didn't use your celebrity 
Ooh. And so I was at that point in Las Vegas, Facebook was just kind of jumping off. And so I was using Facebook, putting up quotes. People were liking my quotes. I was building a following. I had reconnected with a lot of people who connected with Charles in Charge and connected with me being Mr. TSU. And so when he said that, even though I did not have a job at that point, even though I was still trying to figure out my life, it rung so true to me. What are you doing with your TSU celebrity? And so how can I celebrate the the centennial in a way that is so me? Mm-hmm. And so what I did was the other thing that I'll tell you about my grandmother, she was an extreme coupon shopper. And so then people who would go on Oprah and they'd be like, I just bought $300 worth of groceries and I only paid one penny. That was my grandma. <laughs> so my grandmother would fix care packages and she would send them off to anyone who was in college, anyone who was in school. And she made sure that everyone had everything. Like the joke when I was in school was people would come by the closet because they knew that I'd have toothpaste, I'd have toothbrushes, I'd have body wash that she sent. And so I combined her mission with Donald Trump saying, what are you going to do with your celebrity? And so I came up with the Big Blue Giveaway. And so for those of you who don't know what the Big Blue Giveaway is, the Big Blue Giveaway is where I challenged in 2012 at our centennial homecoming, I challenged alumni to fix a care package or write a check or get gift cards or just get some items and randomly bless a student. You don't have to know them. You don't have to to um, have they don't have to have any special GPA. They don't have to qualify simply because you saw them and they were the lucky recipient that you chose. They're going to get blessed. And so that's it's blessed hundreds of students um, up until this point. Again, we're celebrating 10 years. My favorite giveaway was I went to Boyd Hall and I asked one of the RAs, I need someone to give this to. And so I saw this dude who like had a like crazy look on his face. And I was like, I want to give it to him. <laughs> and he's like, no, anyone but him. He's like tripping. He's been, he's not acting right. I don't even know if he's going to be here next year. And I was like, that's exactly who I want to give it to. Mm. Um, and so I pulled him aside. I took him over into a corner and I was like, you know, this is for you. And it was a huge basket full of stuff. He's like, what is this for? Like this for me? You serious? This is for me? I was like, yeah, this is for you. I want to, I want to just give you something. And he's like, man, I don't deserve this. I don't need this. I was like, no, you deserve this. And I was like, and I need for you to know that you deserve this and know that you don't have to do anything special for someone to do something nice for you. It's like, but one thing that I need you to do, I need you to turn around. Whatever's going on, whatever's like mad, sad, whatever's going on in your world, I need you to turn that around and realize that there's so many people who want to be here in the space that you're in. And for whatever reason, they couldn't be here and you get to be here. So you got to be here differently. And so I just gave that to them and I walked away. And usually what's interesting is I usually get their contact information and I usually keep up with them. I wanted to just drop that with him and, 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 and move along mm-hmm. so that, so that he could sit with that. Sometimes you have to drop something and drop a seed and let it grow when it grows. So I don't know what that did for him. I don't know if that helped him. I don't know whether he changed. I don't know whether that's a major part of his life, but I will never forget that people will try to stop you from blessing people. They don't mean any harm Mm. because they have criteria for who should be blessed. But in this world, there's no criteria for who should receive a blessing. And Mm. sometimes the person who would be least likely to receive your blessing is the most likely person that you should make the recipient of your blessing. So that's the other thing that I believe within this whole alumni experience, bless an alum, bless somebody, bless, bless as many. I, on my Instagram, I just changed it. I used to have be a bland, be a brand that blesses. That's, that's what my, that's what my personal mantra is. I want to be a brand that blesses. I just thought about something as you were just talking, man. It's something I want to do. And I'm going to challenge Mario with this, too. Next year when we go to homecoming, we're going to walk through Boyd and Watson. And we're going to st- – but how we going to start this, Mario? And you probably ain't going to like it, but this is what we're doing. And I'm saying it now. Charles can hop on board if he like. And we're going to spread this. We're going to go to the ATM. We're going to withdraw $100. And we're just going to walk through the dorms. 
And the first person we want to give it to, snatch somebody out your pocket, give it to them. And it's just like, I just think we did, that's just what we need to do when we go to homecoming. Like, that's just be our thing. And we, be, we become known for the guys that going to come on campus and give our money to random people and just blessing people. And I just think that would be dope, man, because, you, like you said, Charles, we would never know what that kind of uh, bump or gesture does for somebody. Like, we was up there uh, for homecoming this year. We went and talked to my nephew and some random, I guess some professors told them, when you see alumni, this is your class project. Like, mm-hmm. talk to them, get their name, understand what they went to school for, what they doing now. And so they were like, hey, alumni? We like, yeah. Man, we stand on the steps, talk to them for 30 minutes. They like, man, like, what did y'all go to school for? How did y'all deal with the homesickness? Yeah, um, like, and so we just talking to him, and I'm like, "Yo, this is so dope because nobody did this for me." So I right. said, "I'm going to give you all this free game." I said, "If I don't tell you nothing else, get an internship." I don't care what nobody say. I say, "There's people that I went to school with that has an internship their junior year. They are still with their company, and they ain't even forty yet." So I said, "Imagine that tenure with this company. What kind of money they making now? What kind of role they're in now?" I said, "Do an internship." I said, don't even do free internships anymore. Y'all going to get paid. But I said, back when I was in school, you, you probably had to do it free. So I said, do it. Just do an internship. I said, meet as many people as you can. You're going to meet people from many walks of life. And they were just sold up this information, just looking at us like, wow. I'm like, man, give me your social media. Let's stay locked in. Yeah. Like, I, have a, I have a clothing brand. I would love to see some stuff and be an influencer for me. Be my eyes and ears on the campus. Let me know what's going on. You know, I'm like, like, this is so dope. So I just think going forward, Mario, that's something we need to do, man. And I mean, you know, maybe it don't have to be money all the time. Maybe it could be just we just stop at the store, pick up something, and we just that's just hey man, somebody coming out the door here, man, here, like it's yours. They like what? Like, here's yours. Um and it's anyway, been different every about- year. It's been and and that's a that's a cool thing about it. It's like what whatever that year. I've I've taken kids grocery shopping. Um, I have uh, taken kids out to eat. I took the, a group of kids to top golf. Um, it, it, there's, there's just, there's so many different ways. And, you know, like even I bless, a lot of times I bless the top student leaders because people forget to bless them, even though they, they're, they're like everywhere and they're doing everything that is work. Y'all, when I tell you people, it took me a while to get back involved after I graduated because I was tired. When I tell you that being a student leader is no joke and 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 no one knows to lift you up and people are critical of you and you've never done this before and you, you're having to be in front of all, all these people from all over and you, you know, you, you have your own nerves. I was burnt out when I graduated and mm-hmm. I never knew that I would come back into the TSU experience as a leader that the, it, it it still shocks me to this day that I came back at it because I had retired it I had really retired Charles in charge because mm-hmm. it was exhausting it, it was and I learned tools along the way to self-care um being authentic um it, surrounding yourself with positive people and encouraging people I learned how to be better as a leader but when I was just doing it raw. It was it. It exhausts you. It is an alumni that has his own investment app. You know, set on the app store called Let Bob. So you know, hey, I, I just open up. You know, saying we open up Bob accounts, man. We just put money in the account, man. Let let them invest for free, man. What would Charles, the alumni president, Charles, right now, tell his younger self, Charles in charge, Charlie? What would you tell that person? I would tell him to have more fun create more memories don't be so hard on yourself it's gonna be okay and don't be afraid to connect five dinner guests dead or alive who you who you who gonna be at your table wow that's a good one so we're gonna go with Jimi hendrix Ooh, Jimi hendrix we heard that one yet Here yeah. we go. Jimi Hendrix is, again, I enjoy trailblazers. I enjoy people who go into uncharted territory. Um, I, I love icons. I, I absolutely love iconic people. So mine, mine will be iconic. I wake up every morning to Jimmy, Elvis, Marilyn, and Michael. They're right beside that. I have paintings of them right beside my bed. And so like every single morning I wake up, I see Jimmy. Marilyn, Michael, and Elvis. Mm-hmm. So, um, so those are four. 
of the people. I would have Marilyn wow. Monroe. Wow. Um, because I understand, you know, I always, I think that people like Kim Kardashian, when people talk about how dumb or they talk about how superficial they are, I see how brilliant they are. And there's a brilliance for you to be dead and you still be on walls and see you still be on people's T-shirts and, and still be so influential and be dead. So, um, so yeah, so definitely Marilyn Monroe, definitely Elvis Presley, Elvis Presley. Um, I've always identified with his ability to use church in the secular world. I've always identified with that. I want to say uh, not, I don't want to say tortured soul, but I've always identified with the, the duality of being able to be, to, to use one in the other world and, and do it well. And then Michael Jackson, um, because I think that if Michael could have lived in our generation where you could edit and crop versus actually have to go have surgery and bleach and do all these things, I think that he would still be around, but he learned how to do what everyone would do. He just could afford to do it. And everyone does it now. Everyone edits and people crop and people put filters and people. So everyone's doing what Michael Jackson did. They just don't have to actually do it to themselves. So to be able to transform yourself over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, I admire that. I also admire the fact that he was popping every decade of his life. <laughs> That's true. It's off the chain to be popping as a kid, popping as a teenager, popping as a young adult, popping as a, a, a middle age. Like, <laughs> that's that's off the chain. And so then my final. So that was four. And then my final person, I would have to say um, John F. Kennedy Jr.'s father. The monster. Patrick Kennedy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because Patrick Kennedy said, you know what? We're Irish and we're not supposed to have half of the stuff that we have, but my family's going to be okay. And mm -hmm. we're going to create an American dynasty. And <laughs> so my son's going to be the president. And that son that I thought was going to be a president died. And so guess what? The next one's going to be the president. <laughs> and he made that happen. The ambition and the nerve that Patrick Kennedy had to take his family to the top, mm -hmm. um, to be responsible for bringing Hollywood to politics, mm -hmm. to be responsible for presenting politics on TV. I identify with that because I feel that that's what I'm having to do as the president with social media. Mm -hmm. People have never seen what an alumni association president does unless they're in person, unless they're at the meetings, unless they are around that person. And so to be able to, to televise the revolution, mm. I, I identify with the Kennedy. So I would definitely have Patrick Kennedy senior at the You know, this this the, this is I just thought of something by you saying that you know the, the bald dad that was talking about his sons and stuff. Mar he he like said a lot of this stuff and I don't think he people appreciate him because at the beginning, like, this dude talks so much, he's going to mess his kids up. Mm -hmm. All his kids are the NBA at once. At one yep. time. He said it was going to happen. He got and, it. And two of them still in the NBA. Yep. And, uh, I mean, it's like... Yeah, look at a year. I mean, you yeah. can't... Look at a year. One got a second contract worth 100 mil. I mean, <laughs> what, what can you ask for? I mean, he okay. did it. You know what I mean? And it's like, people don't appreciate that, but he was so loud and in the way early on and people were just like, oh, this man going to mess it up for them. And like, he put his kids in position and he said what was going to happen and he made it happen for them. And not, they had to definitely had the skill sets, but um, he, he, he said that was going to happen, man. And I don't think a lot of people like look at that and be like, wow, like, you know, the, the parent that's at the, Pee Wee football game is loud and talk about this and that and people be like oh you know that's just an angry parent it's like no that's their parent is saying my kid gonna get to the next level and yeah. you know they 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 stand on it so um you know to your point about the Kennedys and kind of how that 
kind of how the dynasty took place and the Kardashians. Yeah. You know, a lot of people be like, man, I don't watch this stuff. It's like, bro, I think they the only show that's been on TV 35 seasons. Like, they don't go off TV. They find a way to keep reinventing themselves. And I'm just like, yo, they're going to be the richest people we know. And they, I mean, they, they kids growing up now. So it's like, it's going to keep going. So yeah. it's like, people say this, the, the Chris lady, the mama was the one kind of, kind of created all this and it's like she gonna be the genius behind it because yeah. these kids growing up and they gonna keep filming them and it's gonna keep going so bro one of the kids is a billionaire like i mean just yeah. think about that like it went from kim and ray j doing what they did <laughs> yeah the i mean for real to the to the he sister, did hit first yeah, i know right <laughs> <laughs> legendary <laughs> ray j and he got earbuds you know what i'm saying even ray, ray j making the money now you know yeah yeah i saw ray j in the club in dc Oh man, you gotta give us that he, story. He was in the back of the club, and I'm like, dude, that's Ray J. And I'm with I'm with one of my guys. He like, bro, that is Ray J. And he just chilling by himself, not a big large entourage. So I'm like, I'm gonna go say what up. So I'm like, hey, what up, Ray? He was like, what up, man? And uh he said, I said, hey, you hit it first, right? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> he was just super Ray J in person. I'm like, this dude crazy. Like when I said that, he stood up on the couch like, you know it. You know, what I'm saying? he's on my list too. Hey, Ray, man, he's one of my people. Like if you said ten, Ray J would be on the list because <laughs> I, I enjoy his personality. I enjoy, yeah. I enjoy that he just lives and is wild and just does what he wants to do. Um, yeah, he's he's definitely on my list. Now I have a, a Ray J in the club story too. However, I didn't get to meet him because Suge Knight walked up. What? And, and so when Suge Knight walked up, I stopped breathing. I was like, <laughs> I, I'm not going to breathe. I'm not going to look up. I'm not going to look around. I'm going to stand here until I'm acknowledged. <laughs> I am not trying to lose my life in this club tonight. I do not want anyone lighting no candle for me. No, <laughs> So yeah, so it was the all star. It was an all star weekend. I was like, at, I was at one of Ray J. It was a Ray J. party, and um, and yeah, I was like, oh no, this got me nervous. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that yeah. shit got that aura. But see, they you, you got that aura too, man. It's but you, you know, it's like uh, it's like Bruce Lee or you got that glow. You can either be Bruce Lee or show enough. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> one person is show enough. You can be Bruce Lee, Roy. You know what I'm saying? Hey, show enough was on my license plate for years. <laughs> for real. <laughs> that was my license plate. For you. Now, like since I moved to New York, you know, it blows up the spot. Like I I don't see personalized tags here in New York that much. But in Missouri, that is the thing. We will personalize, <laughs> we will put a personalized license plate on a bike. <laughs> on whatever we can put a personalized license plate on. So my personalized license plate was shown up for That's years true. because of 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 Bruce Leroy and and shown up. <laughs> I love that. You think they're going to do a remake of it? Or, or you think that's something that's like... They need to leave it alone. Leave it alone? Yeah, yeah. they need to leave that alone. Because, uh, you know, I, I used to like Bruce Lee movies and everything. I think that now, like Karate Kid, it was it was popular back in... Those, those martial arts movies were popular. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, we just don't have them anymore. So I don't even think it would translate in this generation mm -hmm. the same way. Because it just... It, I think that people are into my... I think that all of the things that they took from the martial arts was now not the fighting. I think that now we have mindfulness and we have people who meditate and we have people who are zen so i think that they took the the peaceful elements of the martial arts and did away with the fighting aspects so i don't even know how it would 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 translate how, how much longer you, you have left because this is your second term right yeah this is the second term so i'll be done in june 2024 okay That's when the the national convention is going to be in nashville so i'll be done then so it's a bit, yeah, it's it's been quite an experience. When I um crossed over in Alpha, I remember um one of the brothers told me, um, Alpha is a university. And I, I took that to my soul, but I will tell you, being the alumni president is a university. <laughs> when I tell you it has taught me things and shown me things and parts of myself, I've grown. I must say that I'm very proud 
to have done this and I'm proud of what it's taught me. I'm proud of how it's, it's developed me because I do, I, I think I've always been a believer that whatever you do prepares you for the next thing that you do. And so um, I have learned a great deal of things. I've learned how to communicate better. I've learned how to just um, meet people better. It's so, it's so much easier to meet people. I'm so shy. y'all. I promise you, like I'm the most shy person in the world. Like I'm very shy, but I know how to turn on. I know how to do what I'm supposed to do. But now my shyness is left and, and I feel comfortable and I feel more confident interacting and talking to people. Keep, keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep being Appreciate great. You. Keep leading, man. You're doing a great job. We, we see you, man. We see you doing big things. And I know these shoes, big shoes to feel, but you, you walking in them, man. So keep, keep, keep doing your thing. Thank you. Yeah, did again before we get off. I just want to say thank you again. I got your paper blessing. And I was blowing you up too, man, going through the process, man. So I, I really appreciate it, man. You uh Ariel said this is gonna be the one. He said, Man, we get Charles, man. We lit I mean, <laughs> early, man. So I'm like, this is dope, man. Like, we just knew this is gonna be a minute before we could get you, and this is gonna solidify us. Like, like people are like, oh, like y'all really doing it. So yeah, this is like, it, man. you know what it means. It means we got to be the podcast of the National Alumni Association, man. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> this is dope. Going to Tennessee State University, you know, you just you hear music in the club, whatever. But you didn't appreciate the DJ to use at TSU because yeah. you walk through the courtyard and you know three to four songs are going to get played. Hands down, they getting played. What up by Yo Gotti? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It's a couple of others. You know, it's getting played. You know what I'm saying? So it's like CeeLo is like, it's like brings back so many memories. And so during the pandemic, when CeeLo would come on Courtyard Wednesdays and play music, man, it would just like, I would stop what I'm doing. I'm like, I'm on lunch break, put my little busy uh thing on my uh <laughs> communicator. And yeah. they got CeeLo on in the courtyard, man, he's spinning. And I'm like, bro, this so lit. Everybody to come in. Charles stepping in. You know, the president <laughs> is here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it was super dope, man. What we was doing during the pandemic, man. So we definitely got to get CeeLo on because he is definitely a part of the culture and a part of our history. And, you know, we can all relate to it. So to that point, when Charles said he heard music, that was probably CeeLo out in the courtyard spinning, you know? CeeLo is super dope, y'all. Like, when when I tell you CeeLo so embedded in, in the TSU culture, but then also just what he does in the community. So, like, shout out to CeeLo. He's he's really dope. Dude. Yeah, I know the nonprofit he does, we, we get the kids to George, was cool, man. I, I, so yeah. I was in a... I was I went to the Super Bowl because my, my Bing was lost, but he was out there spinning at a party, man. I was like, bruh, I got if, if TSU had like a book, he would have a whole chapter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, so, he's yeah. dope. Yeah, he is very dope. So but that's TSU. That is so there are so many people and so many reasons to brag. And again, that's how I started. But that I will tell I will say that again. And shout out to both of you. You you are doing amazing, 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 amazing work in the world. Um, you're good people. You are solid brothers, and you are you are just doing the the damn thing in your respective areas. And so I just I salute you, and I want to encourage you all to keep going and stay focused and keep passing along your jewels. Just to to have a show where you want to to invite people on to uplift and shed light on what they're doing. It also sheds light on how dope y'all are. And so I just want y'all to keep up the great work. This is another, yet another chapter in your life that will be impactful. And so stand on this chapter, use this chapter for great things, but let it bless you. A lot of times when we do things, we, we think of all the ways that it blesses everybody else. But I want you to remember to allow this experience to bless you both. Everybody, we can't say nothing else. But that is spoken. I know oh, <laughs> my God, Mr. President on there. We appreciate it, man. Our show, uh, HBCU Culture, our culture, HBU stands for Homecoming Brings Culture and Unity. Is no other unity but TSU with them dunks. Oh, think work is served. I'm so glad. Sing glory. Hallelujah, man. That's what I'm talking about. We got the first dunks too, man. So we appreciate everybody. Again, Mr. President, we appreciate you, man. Keep on doing what you're doing. And once you get to your next office, man, whatever I got to do to help fundraise, I'm here to help. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> awesome. Everybody else, though, man. Peace.